I've already have it all apart. Uh, the reason why it's all apart is because I did a carburetor job on it just before now. Um, we're going to have to pull everything off the top here so we can get to the valve cover and get it off. And then I'll show you how to, what to do from there. Alright guys, so so far I've removed all the cables and hoses from along the top here. Um, there's a little vacuum solenoid that sits right here. I removed that and left the screws in place. The, um, what are they called? The coil packs are mounted right here and here. Just unbolt them. There's a couple of wires you unplug off of them. Wires are right here. Just unplug them and unscrew them here and just pull them off with the cables. Uh, remove the spark plugs. You're going to need the spark plugs out to um, turn the motor over. You're not going to start the motor, you're just going to turn it by hand. Okay. So, um, what was this? Uh, you're going to remove your um, choke cable. Not remove it, just disconnect it from the carburetor, which hooks up right here. Disconnect your throttle linkage right here. I actually moved it aside to over here. Um, there's some vacuum hoses that went to this diaphragm. I just moved them off to the side here and here. And that's about it. I'll be back with some more. Alright guys. Um, I removed all the bolts in it. So there's... Gotta remove the bolts on these. And these have O-rings in them. I'll show you. See the O-ring here? You're gonna have to replace that O-ring so it doesn't leak. Okay. And in total, not including these, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, there's one right back here, same as the front, 12, 13, and 14. So a total of 14 bolts, hold this down, um, I'll show you on my work, little work table. Uh, these ones here are this, and this is a six millimeter. Those are six millimeters, and the other ones are these ones that go across the middle. They're a ten, yeah, ten millimeter. These ones are ten millimeter, and then these ones that hold on those oil lines are five millimeter. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. There. Five millimeter. Alright guys. Now I'm going to take the top off here. I'm going to use a uh, um, sand hammer or rubber mallet, dead blow, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to tap the top here to break it loose. Just to show you, I haven't already done it. It's not coming off. So. Just a little... Tap in the corner. There we go. Loose. All right. bracket here has got to come off. Yeah. There we go. There's the gasket. I mean, not the gasket. There's the valve cover. Nice and clean. Nice and dirty. 
So I'm going to clean this guy up. All right. So I'm going to clean this thing up real good before I put it back on. Where all those gaskets there are going to be replaced. Those rubber grommets, this one just fell out. But the rubber grommets in there are going to be replaced. And I'm also going to replace the uh, gasket inside that part. All right, next I'm going to show you how to adjust the valves. Okay guys, um, the valves on here are adjusted to, show you here on the book, engine valve clearance, intake valves, 10 to 15 millimeters, exhaust valves, 18 to 23 millimeters. My feeler gauges, don't do those exact numbers. The top number on there is um, SAE or standard. The bottom number is metric. Um, I'm going to use a one point, oh, a point two oh three for the exhaust, and a point one two seven for the intake. And I wrote on there with a sharpie E and I, just so I know which one is which whenever I'm using it. All right, guys, um, in order to start this process, we need to uh, turn the cams so that way they're facing in the right direction when we go to adjust them. If you can see right here, there's a line here and a notch at the bottom. I double check the book. The notch. All right. The, on here, the notch has to face that way. And there's another notch on this one, right here, so it needs to face that way as well. So in order to rotate them so that way they face the opposite direction so we can adjust the first set of valves, we're going to put the bike in gear. high gear specifically. So I'm going to put it all the way in six. Which I think it is. And do we have notches on this side? No. So we have to do it on the other side. So we're going to rotate the duck. Rotate the tire so the motor moves clockwise, meaning we're driving. And as you can see, I'm bouncing the tire here. There it goes. And it's moving those lines. So I put that notch. Oh, that one's way off for some reason. Okay, I'm gonna put that notch so it's right here on both sides. Okay, so I'm back. We're gonna start with the number one valve, or number one in, uh, cylinder. We're gonna do one, two or uh, intake and exhaust, sorry. Intake side, exhaust side. This is a, a double valve cylinder, so we have to do both. Intake, exhaust, one, two, and then we're gonna do
and then we do number cylinder two, we do the exhaust valves, and on cylinder three, we do the intake valves. And then we spin, we rotate the motor again, and then we're going to do the exhaust valves. Right? No. Sorry, I had that backwards. Exhaust valves, intake valves, no. Exhaust valves, intake valves, and then intake valves, exhaust valves, and then both. So first thing we're going to do here is crack these nuts loose. So they're all loose now. All right, so now that we already have these loose, we're going to use our E5 Torx bit, and we're going to use our intake feeler gauge, uh, the uh, 0.127 millimeter, and stick it in between here. See, it's too tight, so we're just going to loosen up the screw here. It's actually too loose. You just want it to pull out nicely. So just tighten it up a little bit at a time. You want to just barely grab it. And right there's it. So I got it set. Just go and tighten up that nut. Make sure you hold on to your screwdriver when you tighten it because it will change the adjustment. And once you have that tightened up, go back and check it. Like a saw. So I'm going to do that for all, what is it, 2, 4, 6, 8, 8, and 8. Do that for all 16 valves, and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so now they're all adjusted, and they're all uh, tightened down. Um, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to clean the edge around the whole thing. Then I'm going to put a real light bead of RTV silicone to get it uh, to seat nice and securely. Okay, so the silicone has been put in place, and I've already wiped it down with my finger a little bit. Um, I just left this side here. So all you're going to do is just take your finger and just wipe it down like so. That's where you get that thin, thin, thin layer. You don't want it super thick because you don't want it oozing out whenever you go to put the, the, head, the valve cover back on. You just got to make sure to get it inside these little lips too. Okay, now that the silicone is on, we're going to let it set up, but while it's setting up, we're going to stick the gasket on back on, uh, the new gasket on in place.
so the gasket is generally in place. Um, I pressed in all the little half donuts. And uh, now I'm going to clean the valve cover and put the new gasket onto the top of the valve cover. Alright guys, I'm back again. Uh, so we're going to... I, I've already cleaned the valve cover. See? Nice and clean. Um, I'm going to put these new valve cover... Uh, spark plug hole seals in there. There are two kinds here. Oops. It's the same one. You got one with one hole and one with two holes. But the center one's got the two hole and the outer one's got the one hole. So I'm going to slap all those on right now. Put a little bit of silicone in there to help seal it. Then when I'm done placing these in here, I'm going to put some silicone in here. And a little bit on the backs of these. The silicone is just a preventative measure to help um, make sure you don't leak again. Now we're just going to wipe off the excess here. So we're not making a mess whenever we go and put it on. And that's that. Now let's get this thing put back on. Alright. We're all siliconed up. Gaskets on there. Gaskets on there. So let's put it on. Goes back on this way. back in place. I'm going to go through and put on these new little rings. These guys. And I'm not going to worry about siliconing these. So we're going to start by tightening down the metal two bolts first. We're just going to snug them down to start with. And we're not going to crank on it, we're just going to so we're using a quarter inch drive ratchet here, so a short one, just to make sure we don't over tighten it. 
So we're not cranking on it, we're just tightening it down enough to where it seats. The two middle ones right here. And then we'll move to the outside. Snug. Now the whole center area is tight. Next we're going to move to these to these bolts here. And what I like to do is whenever you're tightening it down, you want to start on the inside and do a star pattern. Then you'll move to the outside. Alright, so inside, outside, and then that's all done. And then just tighten down these two any order and that'd be it. All right, so now that we've got this all tightened down, we're going to put our new O-rings inside these lines here and just put a little bit of uh, RTV right around them just to make sure they're good and sealed. Okay, so we've got the one ready here with the uh, O-ring in place and a little bit of silicone around it. So I'll just get our bolts here pop them right in. All right guys, that's it. We're all tightened down. All the bolts are tightened down. And these are back on there. And there's a little bit of oozing coming out the sides. No big deal. You can leave it there. You can wipe it off, whichever. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I'm going to finish reassembly off camera. And uh, I'll see you next time.